Oil was struck at last and drilling commenced. The great oil company was formed. Oil was discovered in 1908 in southern Iran. Control of the oil was in the hands of a private British company, which would eventually become British Petroleum. A pipeline was built and a huge refinery at Abadan on the Persian Gulf. But in 1914, the government took a majority share. Oil changed Iran into a strategic asset for Britain. Iranian oil would pay for Britain's war effort. It was crucial, the, 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 the move of the, of, of the Royal Navy to oil, principally because it was the means, for Anglo-Persian anyway, by which they secured political support, and the means by which, if you like, oil became more overtly a strategic commodity because, you know, prior to that, oil was used principally for, you know, lighting and, and illumination. But the minute it was used for uh, powering the Royal Navy, clearly the political significance of the commodity was just increased many times. Um, and in, 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 a, in a very tangible sense, um, that, of course, became, in a way, translated into the, the decision of Winston Churchill when he was first Lord of the Admiralty uh, in 1914. He championed um, a move to, uh, for the British government to take a majority shareholding in Anglo-Persian. Iranian oil helped Britain win the war, but Iran was ruined. جنگ جهانی اول واقعا یه فاجعه بود برای ایران البته خب برای تمام دنیا ولی در ایران خیلی فاجعه بار بود ببینید اولا ایران اعلان فوری اعلان بی‌طرفی کرد ولی خب هیچ کس این بی‌طرفی رو رعایت نکرد نه روس ها نه انگلیس ها نه آلمان ها و ترک ها و نه خود خود مجلس ایران, ایران که رعایت خود ایرانی ها and because the british came out of the first world war rather the better than the russians did and there was the russian upheaval and, and the establishment of, of, of communism etc so russia kind of retreats for a while from the international scene and the british are seen as triumphant in in in, in uh, southwest asia where iran is بنابراین ایران در واقع اشغال انگلیس است یعنی جنگ که پایان پیدا میکنه ایران درست میگم همه جا تحت نفوذ انگلیسه At the end of the war, Britain is bankrupt. I mean, this is one of the things that we have to remember. That Britain acquires uh, essentially an empire in the Middle East, not including Iran in this respect, but largely through other tracts of the Middle East. But what it finds is that it doesn't have the money uh, to manage these. It's, it's an expensive venture, running an empire. So they come up with a number of ideas of how best uh, to achieve the results they want. Lord Curzon thought that the best way to achieve this was to offer the Iranians uh, an agreement, a treaty agreement, by which the British would come in and help them rebuild their country. Lord Curzon was Britain's imperialist foreign secretary. He was something of an expert on Iran. His plan became known as the Anglo-Persian Agreement. ایران یک وامی میگیر از انگلیس ضمناً قشونش رو قراری که یک قشون متحد الشکل بشه چون قبلا نیست و این تحت تعلیم افسرهای انگلیسی باشه و مالیه ایران رو هم بدن دست متخصصین اقتصادی که از انگلیس بیان و اداره کنه یعنی ظاهر داستان خیلی اصلا چیز عجیبی نیست اصولا منم فکر میکنم که ایران احتیاج به کمک خارجی داشت و نیروی انتظامی کافی در داخل ایران نبود تا مثلا وحدت ایران و دو مرتبه برپا بکنن But Curzon rode roughshod over Iranian sentiment and many people saw ulterior motives in the Anglo-Persian agreement ایرانی ها تقریبا احساس کردند که ما آلت دست یک قدرت اروپایی شدیم که میخواد فقط از منابع ما استفاده بکنه و این قرارداد و اون به رسمیت شناختن وحدت ملی و اینا یک بهانه است برای اینکه منافع اقتصادی به دست انگلیس بمونه ایران نه مستعمر است نه استقلال داره و خب همین ابهام در تشدید کردن این سوء زن تاثیر داشته برای اینکه انگلیس ها یه نوع نفوذ مرموزی دارن Meanwhile Britain wanted to get its army out of Iran and hand over to Iranians So in time honored fashion it looked for a strong leader to promote the British identified an officer in the Iranian Cossack regiment, Reza Khan. Mm -hmm. 
Reza Khan came to power in a bloodless coup in 1921. Historians inside and outside Iran still debate the extent to which this was an Iranian-led or a British plan. The British certainly trained the Iranian forces, but did they encourage a coup? اینها کام این کارها کاملا بدون اطلاع دولت انگلیس انجام شد دولت انگلیس هیچ اطلاعی از این حوادث نداشت و از این تصمیمات و این اتفاقات بلکه برعکس وقتی سید زیا بر اثر کودتا نخست وزیر شد و قرارداد 1919 رو ملغا کرد بلا فاصله لورد کرزن وزیر خارجه انگلیس فوق العاده خشمگین شد چون این دیگه به اصطلاح کودک خودش بود و سخت نسبت بهش دل بسته بود قرارداد هم دیگه منتفیه و با یه حکومت قوی موافق انگلیس سیدزیا اصولا همیشه با انگلیس ها رابطه دوستانه داره به وسیله او و خب رزاخان قزاق قدرتی قدرتمند و ناسیونالیست و فلان این کودتا به دست اینها اجرا بشه با حمایت انگلیس ها There is no doubt that the, while the British had a role, and they were bound to have a role because they were the only real foreign power in the country at the time with any influence, the, the, the generation, uh, the genesis of the coup and its uh, application was all basically Iranian-led. In 1925, Reza Khan crowned himself Reza Shah and established the new Pahlavi dynasty. وقتی که مقدمات تغییر سلطنت داشت چیده می شود هنوز مثل ترش به مجلس نرفته بود ولی عهد محمد حسن میرزا ولی عهد احمد شاک برادر کوچکش بود یک نماینده فرستاد به سفارت انگلیس در تهران که نظر سفارت انگلیس راجع به این چیه راجع به این تغییر سلطنت و سپرسی لورین سفیر انگلیس تقاب داده بود که ما نظری نداریم ما نسبت به این قضیه بیترفیم بیشک اینها اینو تلقی کردن به اینکه نظری نداریم یعنی که ما طرفتار رزا شاییم رزا خانیم و باید سلطنتون رو سقوط کنیم رزا شا ری برانده کانتری از ایران انسید از پرژا و تراید تا کریت این اندپندنت نیشن بلی در 1932 in the midst of a world recession, the Anglo-Iranian oil company cut the revenues due to Iran. A furious Reza Shah tore up the concession. Cadman, who was the chief executive and chairman of BP, negotiated the agreement pretty much personally with Reza Shah. And actually, I think when he came back, he told his sort of board of directors, we had been, quote, pretty well plucked. In other words, I don't think that Anglo-Persian conceived of that agreement actually as a victory. They felt they'd given quite a lot. I mean, it was a considerable advance over what there had been before for the Iranians. Um, I mean, they'd been sharing the profits. They'd only had 16% of the profits before then, which, I mean, is, I mean, laughable by modern standards. I mean, it's just totally derisory. <laughs> 